My name is Andrew Albert Wyatt. Like so many of you, reading fiction had been a challenge. There were so many books I wanted to read but couldn't. I felt I was too slow. I felt like I was at a race when I read. Other times, when I tried reading something that I really, really wanted to read, I was lost by the third page. I felt dumb. All of that changed, and now I'm an avid reader. I'd like to share with you my story and give advice to those who struggle with reading. <coughs> Please note that much of what I say is geared towards students, but we all can learn from it. For all audiences, I must stress that there has never been a book, no work of prose, that can be loved by all. That is a fact. For those in school, let me stress that point in a more relevant context. In school, we are all forced to read the same stuff at once. Many times, the stuff we are assigned to read is a chore for most, but was picked because the work was in the public domain. Shakespeare comes to mind. In regards to him, language changes. English changes. His work was written in English, but it was very old English. So old, it is hardly recognizable. Few people are able to read his work and instantaneously grasp what the old man is trying to say. Yet, he is a required read. How do you overcome that, then? How are you expected to read, or rather write, something written that is so old it seems like it's written in a foreign language? The answer is rather simple. Use the internet, specifically Sparknotes or Wikipedia. But when you do, follow the abbreviated passages along with what was originally written so you can grasp what was originally said. And over time, you'll be able to understand what Shakespeare was, was reading, was writing without any aid. And trust me, the reward is pretty fabulous. Then there are texts such as the Iliad or Dante's Inferno. They too are a chore for most, but let me let you in on a little secret. A lot of those texts that they have you read are very old translations. So what I suggest is to go to the public library and find modern translations. The last thing I want to point out is why literature classes are required. It is simple. Human nature doesn't change. But as a whole, we are getting better. Literature is recorded proof. That is why they want you to explore certain themes. Themes such as all is fair in love and war. That means in the name of love, all is fair. And in the name of war, all is fair. For instance, if you rob a bank to um, get money for your coke habit, society will frown upon you. But if you rob a bank to pay for your granny's operation, society be a lot more forgiving. The more you identify themes in literature, the more you'll be able to identify them in other mediums, such as movies. The more you, you will be able to learn from the characters and grow and become a much more well-rounded person. For all my audience members, there are two more things I'd like to discuss. The first being reading speed. As mentioned before, I had issues in the past with my reading speed. Then I came across subvocalization, which is basically when you are reading the words to yourself as if it were a stream of thought, as if you were just thinking. That's something you shouldn't do. Suppose you were told to turn off a lamp in a room. You wouldn't go into the room and look at each object until one matches the description of a turned on lamp. No, you know what it looks like at first glance. That's how it should be with words. You don't need to actually read the word to yourself. Just look at them as if they were an object. Then, over time, your reading speed will just naturally increase. Finally, the thing I'd like to discuss for all my audiences is books you want to get into, but you really can't. That's hard. You read the first few pages or even the first few lines and you're totally lost. I know how it feels. It's like trying to become friends with somebody who doesn't want to be friends with you. Luckily, authors want to be read. So, what I suggest oh, is God. for you I'm to... sorry, man. <laughs> so, what I suggest... Wait, wait, wait. So what I suggest is for you 
to look at Cliff Notes, Wikipedia, look at summaries until you are <clears throat> able to grasp the meaning of the words. For instance, when I was reading 1984, I would have to read <clears throat> read like a synopsis on Wikipedia or on Spark Notes. Then I would go back and actually read the text. Same thing when I was reading the latest translation of Crime and Punishment. I would have to read a synopsis of the chapter, then go back and actually read the chapter. But ultimately, my message is, anybody is capable of reading. It just takes a lot of effort. A lot of it um, is the fact that we were taught bad habits, or the bad habits we naturally possessed, but we never really broke out of them. So ultimately, from this point going forward, look around, do research on bad reading habits, look up different methods of grasping the information such as translations, and eventually you will become a much avid reader, and trust me, it is very, very rewarding. Thank you.